Thank you, Madam Toastmaster and fellow Toastmates and guests. Imagine being locked in a totally unfamiliar surrounding. You don't understand why you're there. No one will let you out. There are strange people living there. When they talk to you, you don't understand what they're saying. Why are you there? Why can't you go home? What did you do wrong? Welcome to the world of Alzheimer's. This is very emotional because that's my mom's world. My mom's been in a memory care facility for over a year now, and they take excellent care of her. The workers have patience of gold. She, she is very well taken care of. But there are many things I've learned throughout this process, and I would like to share with you today in case any of you find yourself in a similar situation. I've made a lot of mistakes along the way. One of the most important things I learned is separating her reality from my reality. Because in my reality, I remember how she was, and I want her to be that same person. But I, have to, I had to realize she's not the same person. Her mind doesn't function the same, and I've had to learn new ways to communicate to her. So when she tells me that she just arrived that morning, I can't correct her and say, you've been here a year. I don't want to argue with her. I have to accept what she says. I, when she says she just returned from a trip somewhere, I, I can't argue with her and I can't correct her because I know it's her reality, it's not my reality. Her reality is, is just that. That's what she believes, that's what's in her mind. So I found myself incorrectly trying to make it right and tell her what's right and say, no, that's, no, that's not correct. This is where you are. You didn't just get back from vacation because I thought I was helping her to understand. But what I was really doing is confusing her, making her anxious and fearful because she, of the situation she's in. And if I deny her reality, then, then that's saying she's wrong and confusing her even so it's all about listening. Even, even when she's saying something that makes no sense at all, you just have to listen and acknowledge. Say a word to acknowledge that you're listening, or like an O, or I understand. Just something to know that you care to listen to what she's saying. If she doesn't agree or she wants to argue with a response that you've given, you really have to adjust your response to hers. Maybe you say, oh, I thought that's what I understood, but I could be wrong. You just, you have, you can't argue with her or try to convince her otherwise. Because if you expend energy on trying to convince her and getting her to your reality, three minutes she's back to her own. So you've wasted energy. It doesn't do any good. Another thing you need to do is expect a lot of repetition and you have to be patient. People with Alzheimer's don't remember that the question they're asking you now, they've already asked you 10 times. They will say the same thing and ask the same thing over and over again. Every time they ask the question, it's a brand new question to them. So you need to act as if it's a brand new question to you. Don't act frustrated there were times when I did, when they ask you over and over again, you have to treat them like it's a brand new question and you have to answer it like it's the first time you've answered that question. A good tactic with that situation is to redirect the conversation. If I find that she's repeating the same question over and over again, I just move the conversation to a different direction because she's easily refocused. As an example with my mom, 100% of the time, when I go to visit her, she thinks I'm there to pick her up and take her home. Oh, I'm ready, she'll say, when that's not the case. But if I don't redirect the conversation, <clears throat> the entire two hour visit, I'm trying to explain to her why she can't go home. All the reasons she can't go home, and she gets upset, and I get upset. So we redirect the conversation, and I go with a plan, and usually it's we play Scrabble, we play cards or checkers or something along that line. Just something to keep her mind occupied. I'll put her in the car, we'll go get ice cream. You can't just sit in a room with her and let her direct the conversation because it will be the same thing over and over again because it 
that's what's foremost on our mind, going home. So if you're planning to visit someone with Alzheimer's, I offer the following suggestions. Let them live in their reality. Don't argue with them or try to teach them your reality, because it will only increase their anxiety or confusion. Listen to them. When they're not making sense, just listen. Nod, smile, anything. Make sure they know that you care to listen. Expect a lot of repetition. The question they ask or the story they're telling, you for the tenth time, they don't know that. It's brand new to them. So respond every time like it's the first time you heard it. And be patient. Your frustration and impatience will translate. She will, or the person you're visiting, will sense that. And they will say, well, what am I doing wrong? They won't understand the frustration. And redirect the conversation if necessary. Come with a few topics or activities that you can initiate or redirect the conversation just simply to occupy their mind with activities. Try to make the visit as positive an experience for both of you but primarily for them because you're there to visit them and quell some fears and anxieties. With my mom, after a visit, the hardest part is leaving. It's the same routine every time. I get her a cup of ice cream to distract her so I can slip out easily. I go out the door telling her to wave when the door shuts. I shut the door behind me and it locks. I look back to see her through the window. She's waving. And I can see the sadness in her face and I can see the read the words on her lips every time, don't leave me here. And I know in her reality, she feels lost and alone and abandoned. And in my reality, my heart is I know. A thousand times I practice that. <laughs> <laughs>